So today let's take a look at this control board from my GE dishwasher. And this is the part number for this board. It looks like it's currently unavailable in one search. One similar to it is around $160. Both of these are from Amazon. If we do a quick search on eBay, all these results seem to be from pre-owned boards and they vary anywhere from less than $50 to $130. You really just don't know exactly what you're going to get, but at least they are available. And some local supply houses may have them in stock as well. But we're going to give this one a try first to see if we can fix it. Because the issue may be a simple fix on this board. This board looks very, very clean. We see our power coming in here. And we have a lot of isolation slots. A lot of protection on the input side here. All this upper left hand corner is all basically input protection and right off I don't know if it shows up on camera as well as it does in person but we do see the largest cap on this board this electrolytic cap is definitely bulged and that is most likely the problem with this board the dishwasher has no display power we do see some bubbling here on these varistors but I believe that's just the conformal coating they're both like that and this board does have a very thick conformal coating. We even have a gas discharge tube, varistors before we go through a fuse, and then we have a secondary fuse here as well. We have a current sensing device, some relays, and these SMD varistors as well. Let's just bring over the microscope and just take a closer look at the board really quick. Just make sure we're not missing something obvious. You can probably see under the microscope just how thick this conformal coating is. Looks like an acrylic type. I guess it could be an epoxy type, but it looks more like a thick acrylic type. A good look at our cap there. You can see the bulge. Don't seem to be physically leaky, but is bulged for sure so if it hasn't leaked it's about to there's a microcontroller see no corrosion which with this much conformal coating i'd be surprised if it did it's another small chip transistors some more capacitors these capacitors physically look fine all the pins on the connector look great it's an unpopulated connector header here, and edge card connector looks great. Not much to the back side, but we will give it a quick once over, and we still see some isolation slots here just to help with any kind of arc over an event of a voltage spike of some kind. So real quick here, we'll get the meter, and this varista should show open, of course. We'll just make sure that nothing has it gone shorter with that? And I don't believe so. That looks good. It's just the way that coating looks. I'm pretty sure they're fine. I have already scratched off this spot here at the fuse to make sure it wasn't blown. Didn't do it on camera, but this fuse is good. And I've also taken this other one out, this right here. This one's actually removable. You can check it and put it back also. Is a secondary fuse and it's good as well so that's good hopefully it's nothing wrong with the dishwasher itself this board actually got damaged during a storm so it was probably power related all this input protection probably saved a lot of the board but this cap did suffer and it probably got this cap at a minimum We'll just use our regular multimeter here to start with in capacitance mode and make sure we push hard and get a good connection through the coating. Scratch it up a little bit. And yeah, we're showing really, really low, like 28 micro, which in circuit is kind of hard to go by the actual capacitance reading. But let's bring over the peak ESR70 Gold, one of my favorite capacitance checkers and it might not check here in circuit but we should get a good ESR reading and uh, greater than 40 is not good so I trust it to be showing that that capacitor is absolutely faulty 
I don't believe I have a 250 volt capacitor but I'm going to go ahead and remove this one and then we'll see if we can find one. I'm going to put on some flux and hopefully we can just burn through this conformal coating. Yeah, it looks like it's burning through. We'll bring over our braid, our solder wick, and we'll hopefully remove some of that conformal coating as we heat it up. I'm just going to see if I can heat it up and just slide it out. The capacitor is stuck. Can't tell if it's the bottom pin or if it's the conformal coating, but something's still holding here. And there we go. And yeah, you can see that conformal coating was stuck on the edges there across the center. That's actually where it was sprayed though through the slot. Let's go ahead and bring back over the peak meter and let's see what it reads out of circuit. Yeah, showing around 8 micro and greater than 40 ohms on the ESR, so definitely bad. So 47 micro, 250 volt. Let me see what I can find. So back now, I did not have a new one, but I keep several boards on hand for donor parts. And this is one of them that's got some large caps, and one of them is exactly what we need. We even have a larger 100 micro at 450 volt on here so these boards are just good to keep when TVs get busted screens or bad backlights and not really worth repairing but these components sometimes come in handy including diodes and we have some power components if you can see here under the heat sink which we don't need for this video obviously but I just won't throw these away because the parts are valuable because you simply can't keep every part on hand for sure just good to have another supply to be able to test things and this does show in circuit or leaky but that doesn't bother me ESR shows 0.89 and that's really really good so I have high hopes that this capacitor is good and of course this board was working when it was removed from the broken TV so I'm just going to clip these leads off because we can straighten them up and Put them straight into the other board. Looks like it has some silicone or hot glue. Put a little bit of 99% alcohol on this one as well as the larger cap because I'll remove it one day as well. If it's hot glue, this will help release it. Silicone, it may help a little but not a whole lot. Looks like this may be silicone but it is releasing. And there we go. Yeah, it looks more like silicone. Go ahead and clean this off a little bit. And a little bit more alcohol. Alcohol does not work as well with silicone as it does hot glue, but it still helps some. As you can see here, 47 micro, 250 volts. Going to straighten up the leads. Let's get this board out of the way, and we'll put it back in this board. I do need to give this board a little bit of cleanup. I've already taken the braid and cleaned up the solder from the pads. Go ahead and put this good capacitor in here. Negative is down. And there we go. Let's turn it around this way. Make sure that's flush. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Add some flux. and some leaded solder. And there we go. We'll clip the leads. Do a little cleanup, a little more alcohol, one more time. That's just that conformal coating looks a little smeared. That's just from the heat and the 99% alcohol a little bit as well. 
but that looks a lot better. And if we use the peak meter now, we're showing over 40 micro and still under one ohm on the ESR, so that's excellent. We can go ahead and check these others as well. They look fine. We'll see if we get a low ESR reading. Looking for less than an ohm on these. That's perfect. And let's check this other one too. Perfect. I like it. So we're going to give this back to a friend to see if this gets their dishwasher back going. As an update, this board did power up the dishwasher. It seems to be working fine before the final editing of this video. I'm going to have a link down in the video description for some of the tools and things that we find helpful here on the workbench. Those links are affiliate links. And any of those links that you'd like to click on help support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.